Sponsored by Imaging DNA, ideas, images, insight. The core of the conversation is the image at imagingdna.com. Ever wonder what it takes to live a life creatively? So do we. That's why we're here, to find out what clever people do to succeed in the arts, business, and education. I'm Cecily Korst, and this is The Trailer Talks. We're interviewing artists and educators, musicians, and thought leaders at home and on the road. So come on, it's going to be a good trip. Hey, welcome to the trailer. Come on in. So as you can see, we're not in the trailer. But we're on Skype. So that counts, right? So as you can see, we're not in the trailer today, but we're on Skype with Jeff Talbot. He's a media consultant, a blogger with 7sentences.com, and a filmmaker. Let's hear his story. I think everybody has a dream. My dream is to make films, and I've given up a lot to follow that dream, which is why it's so great to be here in Prague shooting a promo for our film Lucky and Rich. Tell me about your journey thus far. My journey thus far. Well, I was born in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. I went to university, and I did a actually did a degree in veterinary science, so I qualified as a veterinary surgeon. And about six months into doing that, I just had a really strong sense that although I liked my job, that it wasn't I wasn't 100% passionate about it, and there was something else for me to do, and something creative. And I think never really knew that that was an option for me until that point. And so I went to university and did a drum paper and really like that and then just continue to explore um, storytelling both through writing and through filmmaking and through acting and really started to develop the creative side of me and all, all the same while I was doing that I was working as a veterinary surgeon part-time earning income to survive and then I've just gradually sort of let go of that thread in my life and become far more creative and got more into the business side of storytelling and social media and different aspects of media. So it's been a kind of like a divergent journey. I started together and with two things going on and I've slowly been able to let go of one, which is good. Nice. So veterinary that's, school is, that's a tough school just to get accepted to, never mind sure. complete. Sure. What drove sure. you to that? versus going directly into filmmaking? You know, at 17 or 18, you don't really know exactly what you want to do. You th you think you do, but in my mind, I'd done real really well at school, at high school, and my parents were conservative in terms of, you know, you get something, you get, get a degree that you can get a job in, so I did that, and I, I, I liked animals. It wasn't a career that I didn't enjoy. I enjoyed it and I enjoyed the people side of it and there's so much um, so much value from the training and the career that you can just take anywhere else and I think often we get pigeonholed by our training and it's just really dangerous because what your training teaches you is a way to solve problems and a way to deal with people in my case. And of course, I mean, you think it will be a way to deal with animals but most of the time you're treating the person with, with the animal. So, you know, every day when I was working as a vet, I would have to go out and say hello to a new person and bring them into my room and form, you know, build rapport with them and, you know, tell a joke or ask them about their day or help them out when they were upset. And it was just, yeah, it was a really good, that kind of training is priceless because that happens every day in business or in art or just in everyday relationships. So it was really uncomfortable. You know, I have to go out and say hello to 50 different people every day, but I got to really like it and got to practice practice that people side of things. And uh, when did you come to the U.S.? I mean, it was it 2007 I went to the U.K. first from New Zealand for, for two years. Um, and while I was there, I started writing some screenplays and just before I left the UK I had an offer of finance on a screenplay actually on both of them but they were mainly interested in one but I just I did the due process with them because they you know agreed to finance it and they were introducing me to really good people um, and then about after being in LA it was in 2009 for about three months eventually it became clear to me that they were not telling the truth 
I was just taking them at their word and waiting, waiting to know whether or not it would be, it would have made you or not. It was a tough day though, so yeah. to say no to them. Definitely. Tell me a little bit about your filmmaking. I'm writing more than I'm making, which I think every filmmaker would experience. It's very cheap to write and very expensive to make. Um, I like to come at filmmaking and storytelling from a very people-centered um, method. So for me, I really like to get to know the characters first and really know who they are. And rather than being sort of plot-heavy, which is often the way films are made within the studio system in Hollywood where they decide on the plot and then they make the people fit the plot. I like to know the people first and then let their decisions serve the story. So it's definitely the way I like to work. There's definitely some interesting things, I think, brewing in terms of filmmaking, which I'm really interested to get back into. And we're really interested in combining the new media strategies of the internet with the old model of filmmaking. And so that's exciting. It's just, I just can't tell you anything right now about it. But. <laughs> of course not. Sorry. It's okay. We'll watch. We'll be watching. Yeah. Not a problem. So, um, I noticed that one of your interests is stand-up comedy. And then I did, I did some in London, which was a lot of fun. Something I'd like to get back into. I definitely write comedy, uh -huh. and stand-up is fantastic, although incredibly scary. <laughs> And it's the sort of thing that five minutes before you think, why did I ever say yes to doing this? <laughs> why, why, why? And then once you've done it, you're like, that was a rush. I'm going to do it again. I think one of the things I really like about it is you really learn about people when you're doing it. And I'm always surprised. You cannot pick what people will laugh at. You Like every time I've done it, I thought, this is the funniest point of what I'm, you know, I'm going to perform and people won't laugh and then there'll be something that you throw in there as a, and you think it's a bit of a cliche or that it's not very funny and people will crack up so it's, you always I'm always learning through that which I think really informs everything else that I want to do exactly what it is people like and where they connect and, and it's different in different countries too it really is give us a little overview of seven sentences we write seven sentences every day for creative people and I consider everybody creative. I think a lot of people are in denial about their creativity or are ignorant of it, but I think people are creative. So we're trying to help people unlock that and to solve problems. Uh, sometimes that's providing someone with like a technical solution like, hey, you're waiting, you're sitting here waiting for this person to come into your life to give you money to get your business started, but there's stuff you can do right now online with the right strategy and the right approach. And we help them with anything from the SEO to their social media to their blogging strategies. But for us, it all comes down to like, why are you doing what you're doing? And who is that useful for? And how can we create strategies that get you and your content to the right people who it adds value to? Nice. And that's uh, with Genuine Ink Media, which you're the CEO of. Yeah, that's our that's our company that we have yet to build our own website for. So once again, <laughs> it's like mechanics have cars that don't work. I think we spend so much time helping other people that we forget about, which is not good and not excusing at all. Like it's really important that you tell the world exactly who you are as well as you can. But you get sort of caught up with working with other people so much so we've definitely got some plans in place for that it's just getting the space to really develop it out right. there are only so many hours in the day and your clients always come first exactly that, that's exactly how i feel it is actually. where does the wisdom come from that you use to write seven sentences i've learned a lot through my journey and my you know, through my journey but it's it's not that i think about those things when I'm writing, in fact, I normally always write better when I sit down and I have absolutely no idea what's going to come out. And often it's better if I have very little time to commit to it. So it's, in some ways, I think the biggest enemy of our creativity is our thinking. We just overthink things too much or we create like schemes about what we're trying to do and it just doesn't help because... It impedes our vulnerability. 
I think. So the more you can just, and I think that some of that comes from some of the acting training I've done, just to learn just to stand there in front of a group of people or in front of another actor and let whatever they're saying hit you and not deflect it and not push it away and away and not pretend. So it's like getting rid of that layer of like defensiveness that serves a purpose in some situations in our lives for sure, but it's kind of getting rid of that when you when it comes to writing and saying, this is what, this is just feels right and I'm just going to write it and I don't even know exactly what it is and I just do it. What do you think resonates most with your audience? I think there's some kind of honesty or vulnerability and so I want to be truthful and I think people, people pick that up whether that's in my writing or in my blog or my filmmaking or even just in on a business level so when we work with people we're like what is it that you're really about you know re i'm really interested in why and it's a really hard question for most of us to answer like why why are you doing that like why does that matter and money aside like why why does that matter so i think there's something like something of that that comes through in my work What's the one thing that you think everyone should know about living a creative life? The first thing that comes to mind, which I should say, which I'm not wanting to say, is that it's hard. That's, that's, that's it, I think. And that it's okay, too, that it's hard. It's not... I think people think of being creative as being, like, it just comes to you and it's just, it's easy and it's natural and it's organic, but... There's work involved too, and practice, and, and it's scary. Understand that the fear is normal, and that you can do it, and you'll have a lot of fun and a lot of life doing it. Whatever your dream is, live it. Whatever obstacles you have to overcome, overcome them. Whichever people you need to help you overcome your obstacles, find them. Life is possible. Live your dream. That was a peek inside of Jeff's life and journey. You can find out more about Jeff on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and at his website, sevensentences.com. We'd also like to thank Imaging DNA for their generous sponsorship, imagingdna.com. While you're at surfing, check out our website, thetrailertalks.com. I'm Cecily Korst. Join us for the next road trip. <laughs>